Glad you are here. We are joined by Greg Engert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group of Food and Wine Sommelier of the Year. The group includes, in Old Town, you've got Vermilion and Columbia Firehouse. Yep. And then not far away in the Del Rey neighborhood, uh, one of my favorite places we haven't taped there in a long time, uh, Evening Star Cafe and uh, right next door, uh, Planet Wine. It is always good to see you. You too, my friend. What do we have on tap this week? So this week, we're, I, I, I love this beer, and uh, you know we, we've been pouring it at the Sovereign pretty consistently, and, and I hadn't seen it around in a while. It's somehow become a little bit easier for me to get my hands on, and, and therefore for all of us to get our hands on. Um, so I wanted to showcase it and kind of remind people about this great brewery from Belgium, and they're called Duroc. Um, they, in Belgium, they're called Abbe Duroc, but here they're called Duroc, and this is the Grand Cru. Uh, we'll taste it, 9.5%, uh, Belgian strong dark ale, apt Grand Cru quadruple style. For those of you who enjoy Rochefort uh, yeah. 8 or 10, uh, this is a great... Nice maple in the nose, yeah. Maple caramel, hazelnut. That's real nice. You know, the color may put you off as far as summertime, but that'd be totally refreshing on any hot summer uh, yeah, day. It's, it's, Maybe a little on the strong, strong side, side yeah. for a lot of them. But and that's uh, the beautiful thing about Belgian beer is this bottle refermentation gives you that crisp, bright, smooth, kind of creamy effervescence that keeps it light and refreshing. It doesn't make it so rich and heavy on the palate. Also, it's dark in color. There's hints of cocoa and uh, and a little bit of coffee, but it's not roasty at all. You know, it's nice and balanced. Uh, great caramelized flavors as well. We've talked about this, and it's been a long time. I'm just not when you when you find a beer like this, is there any resource where you can go online and decide, and or find out, not decide, but find out what glass is best for it? I think any rule of thumb at the end of the day, you could use a wine glass, like a red Absolutely. wine glass that for any for every beer, beer, right? That's right, yeah. Um, well, you know, a lot of the rating sites, like Great Beer and Beer Advocate, have great examples of what to use. Uh, and typically nowadays, the brewery, each brewery will list the glass and the temp even on their websites. So if you look up, like, you drink a beer, you can go to the website and check it out, especially American breweries. Brasserie de Rock probably doesn't have that, but their importer might as well. That's D&B International. Um, and the glassware is, uh, is a, a very important thing. A beer like this that's so aromatically charged, by putting it in this, in this great uh, goblet, you give the opportunity to, to swirl it, to create and push out those aromas, and then the curvature really focuses it so you can get in there and really see what's going on in the glass. What would you pair this with? This, I actually love this beer with, um, with uh, well, I, eating it with barbecue recently is fantastic because it's got that slight cocoa rub kind of quality to it. Think about this with like a rack of ribs or even like some pulled pork. It can deal with some acidity too, so we've got a vinegar-based sauce that's excellent. Also, um, Mexican food. It almost reminds me of like a mole sauce. So you can do this with enchiladas, uh, chicken tacos, really, really delicious for that. Bake, bacon and sausage links. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what, oh yeah. Uh, maple, you know, pancakes yeah, wrapped with this breakfast, sauce. basically. Yeah. Yes, we're going to be doing a lot of editing of this report. <laughs> uh, Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.